Hi everyone, I'm Shringli from Decibels Lab, EV R&D engineer. Today we want to look up on self balancing. So, what is this particular self balancing in lithium ion? And uh, we might have heard this in the BMS, that basically battery management system. Uh, how do this self balancing happens in between the series, right? So, the top. Uh, uh, of the slide or the screen what you're seeing is a particular I would say a, a normal way of a battery getting charged uh, and depleted from 15% so basically it starts charging this is how a, a, a charge cycle happens in any of the uh, uh, normal set right so but what happens if there is a imbalance right what is basically an imbalance is they have a uh, number of series in the in battery pack connected, right? So each series will have a voltage. So these voltages when vary basically. For example, let us take an example on the screen. So you have uh, four cells here connected. Let us consider that each cells are as one series. Series number one, two, three, four, right? According to whenever the uh, overall battery pack is in balanced state, Whenever it's discharging, it should deplete equally. Um, uh, for example, uh, the one which you are seeing in the screen, it's not depleting equally. For example, the series number 2, 3 and 4 is depleting more comparative to the series number 1. Why this is? This is because of the imbalance. Now, imbalance can occur when, uh, while we are making the battery back, if the cell selected is not uh, in the similar voltage region, then the imbalance can take place uh, eventually may, uh, while the usage. Also, imbalance takes place after a certain number of cycles um, in the overall battery pack. Right? So, on the screen, you can see that uh, there are three cells. Uh, each one of them are in 4.15 volts. This is whenever they are in completely full charge state and full balanced, and they are completely balanced state. So when you start after uh, discharging it for a certain duration, for example, let me say of one year, you can see that each cell voltage has a difference. One uh, cell one is in 3.65, the other one is 3.85. So there's a difference between uh, all the three, right? So when this happens, what our BMS will do if it has a balancing function, after the balancing, basically it will bring all the voltages to the certain level, which will be make sure that uh, they are in equal form. So what happens there if the cell balancing is not done? So this is your remaining SOC. That's nothing but the state of charge. For example, here you can see four bar uh, of charge remaining. Even though there is an imbalance, the overall SOC, uh, remaining SOC shown is higher. So what does this indicate? This is a pseudo value. So for example, if this battery pack is in your vehicle, based on your pseudo value, you plan your uh, trip for more than uh, 100 km based on the range which is showcasing. But in reality, what will happen, uh, the overall capacity won't be uh, to the extent what is being shown to you. Basically, that's a pseudo value. So in order, uh, if the back is balanced, you get the right value, you get the right capacity availability in the in battery pack. Now, as I'm talking about balancing, let us look uh, in more depth uh, how this SOC varies if it is an imbalance. So on the right hand side, you can see uh, SOC levels in ideal battery pack. You can see at each series, they are in exactly same uh, similar value. But in the left hand side, whenever it's in an imbalanced state, you can see the different overall uh, series remaining capacity. So one will have higher, one will have lower. So this will impact to create a give a pseudo value uh, on your overall remaining capacity. Until now, basically, we looked upon the uh, importance of cell balancing. So, uh, I'll showcase you, uh, given uh, one more example, what happens if you are not balanced and why do we have to balance? So, there are two cells here, basically. One is of 90, and, uh, uh, cell 1 with uh, 90H available and uh, other cell with 120H. 
So this gray part is in wasted. They are both in imbalanced weight and the white part is invisible. So here you can see uh, there is a difference in the capacity, right? One is around 60H available. The other one is around 90H available. So there is an imbalance. Once we start balancing them, after a prolonged time of balancing them, the overall usable capacity of the two series or the two cells will be equal. So this will uh, give you a, a positive way or a plus point in order to use the battery pack um, in the right way, right? So when you talk about balancing, there are two forms. Uh, one is called active balancing, another one is called passive balancing. So to give you a, a simple example, what is an active and uh, passive balancing? Let us take four glasses of uh, juice in your, uh, on your table. So you have four glasses. So for example, on the screen, uh, let me take this, this glass number one, two, three, and four. Or let me take an example of the bottle. So if I ask you, in order to balance the quantity of juice in each glass, when I have presented to you, the quantity available in the each glass is different. One will have 700 ml, one will have 250 ml. So if I give you an option, uh, I mean, if I give you the uh, a task of balancing each uh, glass with the right quantity of juice, what are the options available at your set, right? If you think upon it, there are two options, basically. Either way, I can pour the juice from the excessive amount uh, in, in which particular glass there is an excessive amount. I will pour it out, basically I will waste it out and I'll try to balance. The other way around is, I'll try to pour the juice in the adjacent glasses in order to make it completely level. So there were two options or two ways of balancing, right? Basically, pouring the gla uh, juice into the neighboring uh, glasses in order to maintain the equal level of quantity without wasting the juice, uh, basically, is called as active balancing. Similarly, the other way around is basically if you pour out the juice in order to uh, keep it to the lowest uh, available amount of juice in any of this glass is called as passive. So basically what happens in active is uh, you have four series here. So the series which has the higher capacity will provide the current to pass on the current to the neighboring cell which has lower capacity. So from higher capacity is goes to the lower capacity. That is called active balancing in uh, VMS. Then when it comes to discharging, you can see whichever the overall series has a lesser capacity, the higher capacity will be discharged into the lower capacity. This is what happens in active balancing in a simple form. But what happens in passive is, you can see that there are shunt resistors. Basically these resistors, what do they do? They resist the flow of current. So these shunt resistors are present on each series. For example, series 1, 2, 3, 4. Whenever the balancing takes place and particular uh, series has been indicated that it's on the higher side. So you need to deplete in order to co uh, come to the uh, same level to the other cells. What happens is the current starts flowing into the resistor and it is depleted in the form of heat. Basically, whenever you, you try to connect uh, a source that's a battery bike with a resistor and when you try to deplete the energy, you can see that the resistor will start heating up. That is in terms of the, uh, the overall current is flowing out in terms of uh, heat and it's getting wasted. So this is called passive balancing. So the difference between active and passive is basically passive balancing is very easy because the uh, I would say there is no much of complication uh, in, uh, in order you, you just have to balance by pouring out the energy. But active balance requires an algorithm and uh, a correct for quantity has to be passed on to the neighboring cell or the cell which is in uh, in balanced way. So the right amount requires uh, a lot of uh, complexity in the system. So, but the way of balancing uh, is on the um, advanced level, I would say. This basically helps in uh, not wasting any of the form of energy. So there's uh, one more example how uh, it, uh, a balancing happens in a BMS. So there are uh, a few figures presented in front of you. 
So for example, if you look at the series, uh, you have 3.5, 4.1, 3.2. So they're basically an imbalanced way. So on the charger, the charger will connect via BMS and via BMS, it will be charging all these uh, CDs, right? So once the overall voltage is uh, attained, it will cut off. It will wait for the particular delay time. Once the overall voltage has, has a release value, for example, here is a four volts. The charger will start uh, charging the battery back once again. So by doing this cycle, it will uh, balance the overall battery pack. At the end, you can see everything is balanced to 4.0 volts. So this happens in charging cycle. Similarly, uh, it takes place in the discharging cycle also. For example, on the screen which you are seeing, when there is a load connected and there is an imbalance in, in it, uh, you could see that once uh, uh, the certain under voltage is attained, it will cut off. You can see that the overall BMS will cut off. It will take a delay time again. Once uh, the under voltage value, uh, the value has been gone up above the under voltage, then you could see that mm, the BMS will reactivate the whole flow. Right. Thank you for watching. If any queries, please do visit Decibels Lab.